This video is sponsored by Ren. More on them later in the video. I went out to pick up a package and it's very, 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 very cold out. It's been an hour and I'm still frozen. Also like, is a sweatshirt really that comfortable? I think we should just all be wearing blankets. You know, once we ridiculed those ads with blankets that have sleeves, but are they that ridiculous? Potentially genius invention, if you ask me. I mean, I think everyone's stance on fashion has changed significantly in the past two years. What a hot take. We must pull ourselves together. Come on, pull yourself together. Hello and welcome to another episode of Hoya Conundrums, a YouTube series where you ask me questions about Hoyas and I reply to them. Emmy Award nomination pending. I wanted to kick off this video today with a letter that I got from Betsy Begonia of Lille. You all know who Betsy Begonia is. I'm slightly concerned that I might cry. Hopefully not. Oh. <laughs> okay, you don't know there is a there is a joke between me and Betsy um, <laughs> and bananas. Um. <laughs> oh, it says Miro, thank you for everything. You're my best friend. Love Betsy. Well, it doesn't actually say love. It's hard, Betsy. But come on, we we can read between the lines. Okay, did not make me cry yet. I I am getting a bit emotional, but we shall not cry. Who's we? Thank you. That is that is lovely. They bent the card. I don't understand why do the mailmen constantly attempt to bend stuff in? Like it it just goes straight in. It's very easy. Just don't bend my bananas. In my previous video that you can watch here or here, like in one of the corners, I prepared 25 questions and I attempted to answer all of them. But in the end, I ended up editing only six because that was like 20 minutes or half an hour. We don't want this to turn into a feature film, though some of these videos are definitely going in that direction. So, you know, we might need to cut some stuff out more frequently or not get distracted by so many passing thoughts. I think it's more realistic to cut stuff out in editing because this brain is just... Geronimo! So today I prepared six questions for you. We're gonna keep it short-ish. We will try to keep it sweet. Since I already started to ramble and get distracted, I think it's time to take a look at the questions. But before that, here is a word from the sponsor of this video, Ren. Most, if not all of the things that are part of our modern life have a certain carbon footprint. And while that sounds like something that came out of a sci-fi movie, it really is not that cool. Get it? It's because it's literally not cool on the planet. A good thing is that there are certain steps we can all take to reduce our carbon footprint and Ren can help you with that. Ren is a website that through several simple questions will calculate your carbon footprint, compare it to your country's average and then help you offset emissions via high quality climate projects such as planting trees in East Africa, storing carbon in Basalt Rock in Scotland, producing clean cooking fuel in Uganda or protecting the Amazon rainforest in Peru. Ren encourages people to live sustainably and helps climate solutions by crowdfunding them. They offer a monthly subscription that is calculated based on your own carbon footprint, but they also offer several other subscription plans that allow you to help even more. Once you sign up, you can receive monthly updates from the projects that you support and you will know exactly what your money is spent on. You can start today by learning more about REN and their mission by visiting their website REN.co, but also since REN is the sponsor of this video, you can start offsetting your carbon footprint today by clicking the link in the description or in the pinned comment. First 100 people who sign up will have 10 extra trees planted in their name. Thank you, Ren, for sponsoring this video, and I hope that we can all make the necessary change together. First question that you have is how do you make your Hoya undulata grow? Well, what you will need to do in order to make your Hoya undulata grow is on the night of the full moon, grab some paper, pencils, box or a jar, candles and matches, and then, you know, put, put those in some corner of the home because there is a simpler solution and I will tell you what it is. 
In my opinion, Hoya undulata is not that difficult Hoya to grow at all. I know I said this many times before and each time I say it I also add please don't die now because that is what tends to happen when you say to a plant or when you think that a plant is not difficult or challenging, suddenly it decides to die. So we will not have any of that here. But my Hoya undulata was really not problematic in terms of growth. It was both in organic and inorganic media. Currently, it is in inorganic media, but it did really well in bark and moss. That's the previous potting mix that I put it in. Recently, I took a cutting of my Hoya undulata to root in DIY pawn, and it's not the best DIY pawn. I think I, I'm, I don't think, I'm pretty sure that I chose pumice that is too large compared to the size of lava rock, but you know, it's working out, it rooted. I just wanted to test out if it will do well in pawn as well, because I know that a lot of people use pawn. In my opinion, the biggest issue with Hoya undulata is that it tends to rot easily. And that gives impression to a lot of people that this plant doesn't need a lot of water, which in fact is not the case. With Hoya undulata, you will quickly see when you don't water it or when you underwater it, that the leaves will become very pliable. They will become pliable much sooner than in other Hoyas, especially, you know, thicker leaved Hoyas. And the leaves of Hoya undulata have this cardboardy feel to them, similar to Hoya caudata, but in my opinion, they do become more pliable faster than it is the case with Hoya caudata. When it was in organic mix, I would water it every five to six days, and I really did make sure that my Hoya undulata is watered. I did not underwater this Hoya many times. There was, there were a couple of cases, there were a couple of cases, but not that many compared to, you know, what the rest of them may experience sometimes. Because I was very careful with this plant, it's an expensive plant in my opinion, not that it's not worth it, it is, it's gorgeous, beautiful, love it. But I was also very careful not to kill it because it is sort of difficult to come by. My plant spent 40 days in the box in the shipping, it is the famous story on this channel and it survived that. So I really don't think that Hoya undulata is that sensitive. I do think, however, there are some rules that you should follow when growing this plant. First of all, I don't think this plant likes to be cold. I think it grows much faster when it is slightly warmer. And by that, I mean like 24 degrees of Celsius. For all of you who measure the temperature in Fahrenheit, it is around 75 degrees of Fahrenheit. I would not expose it to temperatures that are much lower than that. In fact, I would try to keep it always close to 70. But really, if you want to grow this plant, if you want it to grow well, I would put it on a heat mat if you have a cooler room. Heat mats are quite affordable these days, or you can always find one on a discount, and I think that should help if your home is slightly cooler. If for whatever reason your plant room, your home is very cold, I would consider maybe getting a small propagation box or some type of an enclosure, maybe terrarium, because in that situation it will be much easier for you to control the temperature. When it comes to humidity, I do believe this plant likes it to be more humid, so 60% and above. I did expose it to less than that, and while the tips did not die back, it really didn't grow as much, and it's not an incredibly fast grower, but I think in terms of growth, when the conditions are right, this plant can be quite decent. I grow my Hoya undulata just under regular LED lights. They are 36 watt LED lights and it stays on the shelf that you cannot see now, but I will bring the plant and I will bring the cutting to show you. By the way, this plant is very easy to root. I just rooted a cutting in a cup of water. I was afraid at first because this plant is supposedly very prone to rot, but I really did not have any issues rooting it. This is my Hoya undulata. It is about one year old now and things are happening with this plant. I did cut it back as you can see it. Last time you saw it, I think it had a piece of vine that extended all the way up to here. It's, it's this part, so you can imagine this is uh, how the plant looked like. This is the cutting. It was very easy to root and it's well rooted now in pawn. It did not start to grow yet. I will see how it does. It definitely needs to be watered. This other plant, this is where the issues begin for me. So I cut it back. It started to push out a new growth right here. And then 
it started to push out a new growth here as well, which you will see I will try to take a B-roll. And then now I see right next to it there is another growth and uh, there is also more growth here. And th that, you know, this leaf doesn't really have much, oh, this is a new one. Oh, wow. I did not, okay, this leaf is stuck. See, things are happening here. Do I regret cutting it? Perhaps, perhaps I do. I'm not quite sure where that vine will go and how I will trellis it. I think I will just give up on trellising this plant and let it be. This plant did not bloom for me yet. It is not the best example of me trellising, but at least it has four new or five growth points, which is just, it's a bit too much. Don't you think so? It's a bit too much. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is it's not that difficult plant to grow. There are more challenging Hoyas. I think you just need to pick a good potting mix for it and make sure that it's in a warm space with enough humidity and light and to water it. That answer was a bit long and I'm not sure if it was helpful for a lot of you, but I think it's time to move on to the next question because I think I could talk about watering hoyas and the right potting mixes for a very long time. And there's only so much better in card space that we have. So time to move on. The second question, they said to repot Hoyas in a pot not much bigger than the older one, since they like to be snug. How did your smaller Hoyas do in a bigger pot? I think this advice is given to people who start growing Hoyas because honestly, I don't even think that it's the fact that a lot of people overwater their Hoyas. What I think is that most of the mixes are wrong. They're just not mixes for epiphytic plants. Anyone who grows orchids will know this. Usually the mixes that they arrive in are not very good unless they are from a reputable nursery. But with Hoyas, I think we're not there yet. And Hoyas are more forgiving than orchids in some ways because orchids will definitely not like it and they will let you know right away if the mix is wrong for them and the roots will start decaying really quickly. Hoyas will tolerate the mixes, and I think that's because some of these plants start on the ground floor and then they start to climb up, so maybe they can go either way. In the end, they all end up being epiphytic plants, and from what I read, the bottom part usually dies out and then they are fully epiphytic. Don't quote me on that, by the way, but I think that's some, something I read, or maybe it was a dream. <laughs> Not quite sure. I don't know if their roots like to be snug. I don't know what that means. They, a lot of people say they like to be root bound. I have not found evidence of this. A lot of people claim that Hoya will not start to grow unless it fills the pot that it is in with roots. That's not really true. It is true for some Hoyas that they will take longer to start growing. They will need more time to establish before they start to grow, but it's definitely not true for all of the Hoyas, and that's why I avoid saying this, because if it's not applicable to all of them, you cannot pass this off as general truth, can you? However, that was not the question. The question was the size of the pot. I typically repot my Hoyas one year after they are rooted. It depends what I potted them in. For example, this Hoya undulata, this could potentially stay in this little cup for six months or so. It will really depend how fast the plant will grow. There will come a point when the plant will start to drink water quite fast and you will need to water it quite frequently. In that case, I typically just repot them because it's much easier for me to take care for them. But in any case, when you repot a plant, or in this case, when you repot Hoyas, I would usually choose only one size up, sometimes two sizes up. It depends how big the plant is going to get. And I will show you a couple of examples. This is my Hoya Lombi. I got this plant in October of this year as a cutting with these two leaves. The mix is sphagnum moss, orchid bark, some perlite, and I'm not sure if there is coco coir, but there's quite a bit of sphagnum moss there, as you will see. And I read that this plant does like moisture a bit more, and you can see that's definitely the case. It's watered, it's not rotting. We can see roots are growing everywhere. It did take a bit longer to root, but it's 
Um, not that difficult. I expected it to be much more difficult. So this is a cutting, right? It's two leaves and there is some stem there, but this is a cutting that I rooted in this pot. It was just very briefly in a bag with perlite to get the roots starting, but they were not very long when I potted it. They were maybe two, three millimeters long. Not very long, really. This is 18 centimeter pot. That's quite big. I wouldn't say this pot is too big for this plant. First of all, it wouldn't fit. The stem goes all the way down here, so it barely fit even in this pot. When this plant starts to grow, when it pushes out two more leaves, it will be, what, this size? I don't think this can stay in this pot for a very long time. So if I were to repot this from 18 centimeter, I think I would go for 22 after this pot. I don't think I would go for 20 because that would be just a little bit bigger. I think I would go for 22 centimeters and that is so I could get the trellis in. You have to think about these things, you know. First of all, think, do you want a trellis? Do you want it to be hanging? How long do you want it to stay in the pot? With a good mix, they can stay in the pot for a couple of years. The organic mixes will deteriorate over time. There's no helping it. It's very rare that you can put a plant in a completely organic mix, bark, moss, and that it can stay in that mix for three, four, five years. It will depend, of course, on the quality of the components, but it's very unlikely because they will start to break down. If there is some inorganic matter, maybe if you mixed in pumice, perlite, lava rock, rocks, stones, who knows? A lot of people do a lot of things and I think those are all very great creative options to get some aeration into the mix, then it may be able to stay in there for longer. I have no idea where I was going with that. I think what I tried to say is that, for example, this one will not go into a pot that is one size up. It will go in a pot that is two sizes up. This next plant, it's a bit hard to show you, is Hoya microstemma. This plant is in, I believe, five centimeter pot. So you can see how big that pot or how small that pot is. If I were to repot this one, I would probably put it in eight or even 10 centimeter pot. It would depend. I might decide I want to cut this Hoya and put several cuttings in one pot, but this is quite a fast growing Hoya in my opinion, and I would like to put it in 10 centimeter pot and then be done with repotting. Of course, with a good mix, you should not have any issues, but if you put in a mix that it's very different from this one that's maybe too dense, this is very barky mix. I'm not sure if you can see quite barky. So if I were to put this in 10 centimeter pot, I think it would be fine with a similar mix. Anyways, since now we are completely lost and I have no idea what the question was, I think the question had something to do how the plants did in bigger pots. They did fine. Just don't choose the pot that is too big. You will not go from eight centimeter to 15. I would just factor in how much you expect this plant to grow. With smaller leaved Hoyas 10 to 12, is an ideal size, I would say, for long term. With bigger leaf Hoyas, I would not go for less than 12, really. If you start a cutting in a cup, if you managed to get it into a cup or in a, in a small plastic pot, I would choose 12 centimeter pot as the next one, because I think they will just fill out that pot pretty quickly, and you really don't want to be repotting all the time. I think they do much better when you don't repot them constantly. Um, so that's that, I think, whatever the answer was. I think you can find the info that you are looking for in that answer if you just read between the lines. And there are quite a few lines there. Ooh, the next one is quite interesting. I think this one is very useful as all of them actually today. They're very useful. Great questions. Do you have any suggestions for Hoyas dehydrated in shipping transit? Yes, I do. What I do when I receive Hoyas that did poorly in transit, or actually I think I do this now for all of the cuttings that I receive, I take a big bowl of water, room temperature water, it can be tap water, that's perfectly fine, and I will put algamic, which is seaweed extract. I don't think it's really a fertilizer. It's more of a booster slash a product that you can use to revitalize your 
cuttings or your plants really and I put that in the water it depends how much water I will use so there is there are instructions on the label they say that you can't overdose which I really doubt but whatever I typically will use one cap of that per two or three liters and I will submerge my cuttings into that for half an hour after that I might decide to put my cuttings into a bag with perlite and keep it humid keep it warm or I might decide to put it in a propagation box it really depends on the level of dehydration sometimes if the cutting is very dehydrated I might decide to leave it in a cup with distilled water now this time I won't submerge it completely but I will submerge part of the stem that I am attempting to root what you can also try to do is get a propagation box or really a plastic box put some sphagnum moss damp sphagnum moss and just lay your hoya cuttings there put it in a warm place on a heat mat under some gentle light it doesn't need to be really strong light because in this stage they don't really use light that much they focus on growing the roots of course you will cover that box keep it humid check it every couple of days i really don't check every day unless i'm really stressed out about rooting a cutting for whatever reason but typically i will check every two to three days or sometimes even longer it really depends if you don't have access to something like algamic there are many products out there i think there is also one product here that is used for revitalizing and i don't think they will call them fertilizers but they will say that it's for revitalizing i'm not gonna recommend any brands because i'm not that familiar with brands and the US or in the rest of the Europe so look for something similar to that something that's maybe not really a fertilizer but maybe some vitamins for plants a lot of people will put in sugar they will put sugar in water and hydrate in that and I think that's also okay I've read about this method a bit I think I've attempted it once and the plants were fine so I don't I don't think there are any side effects basically you need to dissolve sugar in some water and plants will take up those sugars I also just think that probably submerging them in you know water for 30 minutes in something that is room temperature will do just fine question number four what different mediums work best with the different varieties of Hoya for example Hoya Rosita Hoya Mitrata versus Hoya Imperialis I would say typically there are two types of substrate if you want to make things very simple of course you can add and subtract some things but generally what I would do if you're going for organic mixes I would make a mix that's 50 percent cocoa peat and perlite and that is great for rooting hoyas and that could be used for terrestrial hoyas maybe slightly less perlite and for epiphytic hoyas I would do a mix with perlite bark you can add pumice in that mix sphagnum moss you can also add a tiny bit of cocoa peat I typically don't because I if I add sphagnum moss there is really no need for cocoa peat for most of my Hoyas I didn't really notice that there are any specific requirements I didn't notice that Hoya Rosita would like more or less bark than for example Hoya Mitrata Hoya Imperialis that's a different story it's a terrestrial Hoya and yes there are some Hoyas that would prefer more water like Hoya Lacunosa Hoya Serpents, Hoya Thomsoni, Hoya Lee, Bella, all of those do like to be more watered but even if you put those in bark and moss and perlite they will do well you will just need to water them more frequently you can get away with potting these in a mix that is with cocoa peat and perlite and I would really do that I like to water my Hoyas typically all at once if you just change the mix that should be possible or if you grow them in an inorganic substrate then it's all the same across the board which you may think it's simpler but sometimes it's not and you will see also in semi-hydro for example that different Hoyas will intake water differently depending how big the plant is how succulent the leaves are and so on so what I would recommend if you have a very busy lifestyle is just you know do two mixes one that is for Hoyas that are maybe more prone to rot like Hoya undulata Hoya mitrata I think those would do much better in a mix that is more barky and then those that want more water you can put them in a mix with cocoa peat and perlite okay so question number five I have a weird question Ooh. I can't seem to find an answer for it anywhere a lot of my Hoyas grow tendrils as Hoyas do 
Nah, they do that. Oftentimes the tip of the tendril will dry and thus stop growing. I don't think it's a watering issue since the leaves seem fine when that happens. Also a lot of the itty bitty tiny leaves that grow on those tendrils eventually fall, so I am a bit puzzled. Well, aren't we all? This is a common thing that happens with Hoyas. It happens to me all the time that the tip of the vine will die back. In the beginning, I thought it only happened because of watering issues if you underwater it. And while that is true, it's only partly true. Tip of the vine can die back for so many reasons. They can die back when you underwater it, when there is not enough light, if you change the light, for example. It happens to me sometimes when I put my plants in a darker spot, for example, when I spray them and I leave them in a different spot for a couple of days, three, four, five, ten, depending what we are doing, you know, sometimes I don't have the time to put all of them back or I'm in between different setups. As you can see, we change things around here. If you retrellis your Hoya, then it's very likely to happen. It happened to me many, many, many times when I retrellised Hoyas that the tip of the vine died back. No matter how careful I was, it's something that I have accepted now at this point. I was very frustrated with it in the beginning and I thought that it must be only a me issue, but I think this is an issue that everyone faces and, you know, eventually you accept it. It is more likely to happen with Hoyas that really tend to grow these long leafless vines. If they don't find something to attach to, sometimes they can die back. They can also die back if the air is very dry, very hot. They can die back if there are spider mites, mealybugs, pests. So there are many, many issues why that can happen. And if you don't see any pests, I wouldn't worry. I would really check for spider mites because this happens very, very often when you have spider mites, especially red spider mites, and those are incredibly difficult to see. I would recommend getting a magnifying glass or something because it happened with many of my Hoyas that the leaves would fall off and the vines would die back just because I had red spider mites and I thought I don't have pests, but in fact I did. So my recommendation in this case is just don't mess with them too much. I am really now in the phase where I'm letting them do their own thing and I have a strategy now because this is something that frustrates me quite a lot when the tips of the vine die back because sometimes you have to wait for a long time for them to start growing and then they explode with growth and then you mess it up because you attempt to trellis it. So now what I do is I let them grow out. If there is a support nearby, I might help them out to that support, let them grow some leaves and then I will trellis them. It seems to be working out so far. The biggest issue is when they twine around something that can get messy. My Hoyas in the back that are hanging do have this lovely, lovely habit of trying to get in between the chain. We will have to talk about that behavior. I think it's just a learning curve with Hoyas and, you know, having to accept that this is what they do. If the leaves fall off, and there is a long leafless vine, and I know that the leaves fell off because I can, you can see the scars where the petiole is supposed to be. I will typically just cut that vine off and very soon they will start to grow a new one. What I noticed, which is a good thing, is that Hoyas do definitely positively react to being trimmed back. So I do it quite frequently. Of course, some of these leafless vines can grow peduncles, Especially with Hoya latifolia, I notice that they tend to push out very long tendrils with no leaves and then those will be filled with peduncles, so I tend to leave them. Sometimes it doesn't bother me, sometimes it does, it really depends. It's just what Hoyas do. That's all. I don't have a better answer for this, unfortunately, because there can be many causes and I listed most of them, so you, you kind of systematically have to go through what is happening with your Hoya. They will also not like if you bump into them. Absolutely not. No, just don't touch them. We are at question number six, which concludes this episode of Hoya Conundrums. And that question is, I have a Hoya Carnosa cutting from my mom's plant. She has a really old one and I noticed that both have leaves that come out with defects. It has indentation from very early on and grows in an odd shape. Not every leaf is like that and the plant is doing fine in general. Is it something that just happens or I can do something about it? 
Typically when the leaves come in deformed like this, it is, well, it can be you messing with the leaves or it can be pests messing with the leaves. I do admit that sometimes I did find the leaves that were quite oddly shaped and nothing was messing with them, to my knowledge, but I do probably now think that maybe there were some spider mites that I didn't know about. My Hoya Finley Sony started to produce heart-shaped leaves, and I'm like, oh, he's so cute, and then I discovered mealybugs, so it wasn't as cute. The same happened to my Hoya Carnosa before, that, you know, suddenly you get this leaf that looks heart-shaped, but then you discover mealybugs and very quickly you start to be not so fond of hearts anymore. Sometimes leaves can come in funky because of the conditions, maybe it's too dry, or maybe, you know, the plant was underwatered when the leaf was growing, so it will come out looking weird. Sometimes it can also happen because there is not enough space when the leaf was growing, so maybe if it was pushing against another leaf, that can also happen. That actually happens very frequently with Hoyas, and it's right now happening with my Hoya undulata, that the bottom leaves or the leaves that are coming from the Domitia are looking very funky. And it's not just because they're leaves from the Domitia, but it's because they're growing among other leaves where there is no space. With Carnosa though, I do notice, and I think a lot of people notice, that they tend to have that tiny indentation towards the top of the leaf, and I think that's quite common. Sometimes they be growing strange leaves for no reason. If the overall health of the plant is okay, if it's a healthy plant, I wouldn't worry too much about it. The thing with Hoyas, I think, is they don't produce these perfect leaves all the time. Yes, sometimes you get a very beautiful leaves, very interesting leaves, veiny leaves, different textures, and so on. But they're not philodendrons, and, you know, philodendrons tend to have these perfect leaves. With Hoyas, it's a bit hit and miss. I read somewhere, and I'm not sure if this was someone who went to Papua New Guinea or someone's opinion, I think it was someone who went to Papua New Guinea, and they said, when you see Hoya in nature, you wouldn't think that they're that beautiful because the leaves are damaged, they grow in all sorts of ways, they're bare vines, quite a lot of bare vines. So, you know, don't worry, they're looking better in your home probably than they look in nature. They might be more prolific growers in nature. I hope that answer is somewhat satisfying. I'm not quite sure. I'm not an expert in satisfaction. That's a weird thing to say. I'm not gonna edit it out. That is all for today. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, you should have done that years ago, ages ago. I do not know why you're still not subscribed. It's fantastic here. Don't question it, just do it. It can be applied to many situations. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you very soon with a new video. And I think the next one will be exciting, but then aren't they all? Bye. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. One anonymous patron, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Carrie Danuk Daniels, Estelle, Houseplant Heather, Hoyas and Whatnots, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B, Martina, Alif Perday, Melissa Walker, Michael Ferranti, PJ, Rachel Collette Conroy, Robin L. Jennings, Stephanie H2O, Spinach Geek, Tanya TJWO, Vicky Dingler, Vojta Takac, and Zlokob Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons. Angelina Farnan, April Arroyo, Brian Phillips, Catherine G, Claudia L, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Lori Murphy, Morgan Kennedy, Nikki, and Ringlob. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline, David Kandia, and Tang Watanas Riakul. Thank you all so much for incredible support, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Horror Conundrums. And I also hope that these answers help with some of the horror questions that you might have had. Stay well, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.